Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. On popular demand, this is the second part of our tutorial on financial ratio analysis. We look into more types of financial ratios and look at how to calculate them with examples. Now first and foremost, the link to part 1 will be provided in the description. Please check it out to understand what financial ratio analysis is and why it's used. And in part 1, what we looked at were liquidity ratio, profitability ratio and leverage ratio. So we won't be looking at those ratios here, we'll be looking at some others. The first ratio type that we are looking at in this tutorial is efficiency ratio, also called activity ratio. Now this ratio looks at how companies use their assets to generate income or how efficiently they use their assets. It goes hand in hand with profitability ratio which looks at how good a company is at generating a profit. As you can see one looks at profit, the other looks at just how much money it makes. While measuring efficiency ratio one can look at the time it takes to collect cash from customers or basically the amount of time it takes to convert inventory into cash. Let's look at some of the types of efficiency ratio and look at how we actually calculate them. The first type of efficiency ratio we're going to look at is accounts receivable turnover ratio. Now this is a type of efficiency ratio that looks at how many times a business can turn its account receivables into cash annually. Firstly, this ratio is also called as debtors turnover ratio because it essentially looks at how well a company gets its debtors to pay. Now let me simplify this further for you. Now most businesses provide some form of debt to its customers. Businesses tend to offer products or services on invoicing terms for customer to pay on the delivery of the service sometimes or sometimes within 30 days of ordering etc. Now Although these are orders, these payments haven't actually been made. So in terms of turning its accounts receivable over, if a company on average has £50,000 of accounts receivables annually, but has actually managed to collect £100,000 in 2021, we can say that the company has actually turned its accounts receivable twice that particular year. So we basically compare the average annual accounts receivables to the accounts receivables for that particular year. So the formula for accounts receivable turnover ratio would be the net credit sales for the year divided by the average yearly accounts receivables. So for if, you, if we consider our simple example, the accounts receivable turnover ratio for our simple example would be 100,000 divided by 50,000, which is 2. The norm in terms of calculating the average yearly accounts receivables is to add the beginning and the end receivables of the year and to divide that number by 2. In terms of interpreting the result, the higher the ratio, the better it is. It's great to have a full order book, but if a business's customers don't clear their debts on time, it will give the customer, rather it would give the company less cash to manage its own expenses. So it's not a great thing, of course. The next type we're looking at is asset turnover ratio, which is another type of efficiency ratio. Asset turnover ratio is essentially a comparison of a company's assets and its net sales. So it's a measure of how efficiently a company uses its assets to generate sales. The formula of this ratio is quite simple. Asset turnover ratio equals net sales divided by average total assets. Again, the higher the ratio, the better a company is managed. If the value is 1, it means that the company generates £1 for every £1 invested in assets. Average total assets is once again calculated by adding the asset values at the beginning and the end of the year and dividing that number by 2. For example, a company's asset value at the start of the year, let's presume that to be £50,000. And the assets at the end of the year is £100,000 and the net sales 
for the year is £25,000. So the average total assets would be 10,000 plus 50,000 divided by 2, or rather it was 100,000 plus 50,000 divided by 2, and that equals £75,000. So the asset turnover ratio is going to be 0.33. And this means that the business generates 0.33 for every one dot pound it's, it spends on its assets. The next type of efficiency ratio we're going to look at is the inventory turnover ratio. This efficiency ratio literally measures what it says it measures. It measures how much inventory the company is shifting that year in comparison to its average. In this ratio, we take into account the cost of the goods in our inventory at the start of the year, the cost of the goods at the end of the year, and also the cost of goods sold. So the calculation for this ratio is simply inventory turnover ratio equals cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory cost. How do we find out the average inventory cost? So if, for example, we at the start of the year, the average inventory cost for an electrical distributor is £100,000 and the end of the year, the figure is £200,000, the average inventory cost would be 100,000 plus 200,000 divided by 2, which would be 150,000. And now, if the cost of goods sold is 120,000, the inventory turnover ratio is a 120,000 divided by 150,000, which is 0.8. And since this number in this example is close to 1 for our company, it's actually doing a good job in managing its inventory. Now, another interesting concept that is quite closely associated with the inventory turnover ratio is the day's sales in inventory. Now, this concept comes in handy if you want to calculate the number of days it would actually take for a company to sell all of its inventory. And to calculate this, what we do is we simply divide 365 by the inventory turnover ratio. So, the day's sales in inventory for the the about company would be 365 divided by 0.8 which is 456.25 and that basically would be the number of days it would take for the above company to sell all of its inventory now those are the types of efficiency ratios that we are looking at and now we are looking at coverage ratios but before we look at coverage ratios i just wanted to let you all know that if you really like the tutorials in this channel, you can now buy me a coffee. And you can do that by using a link in the description. So this is a new initiative I'm trying out, so if you want to support this channel, please go ahead and use this platform and you will certainly bring a smile to my face. Now, coverage ratio is a type of ratio used to understand a company's ability to pay its liabilities of all types. It can be considered to be similar to liquidity and solvency ratios, but we've seen that liquidity ratios look at short-term financial obligations, solvency ratios look at long-term obligations, and what coverage ratios do is they look at a company's ability to cover interest payments associated with all of their debts. And it essentially also looks at aspects that aren't usually considered as liabilities, like regular dividend payments to stockholders. Now, let's look at a type of coverage ratio. Fixed charge coverage ratio. Now, this coverage ratio type measures a firm's capacity to pay its fixed charges with its income before interests and taxes. Fixed charge coverage ratio equals earnings before interests and taxes, which is EBIT, plus fixed charges before taxes, and then you divide that whole number by interest plus fixed charges before taxes. So this ratio is technically an indirect comparison between interest and fixed charges before taxes. Now let's look at an example. Let's assume that a cafe owner is looking for a loan to refurbish his cafe. Now, his income statement reveals the following. His EBIT is 100,000 and his fixed charges before taxes is 25,000. 
and his interest expenses ten thousand pounds so the fixed charge coverage ratio will be a hundred thousand plus twenty five thousand divided by twenty five thousand plus ten thousand and this comes to three point five seven so the cafe's income is about 3.5 times its interests and lease payment. A loan could there therefore be sanctioned. So it's interesting, a lot of finance companies could actually look at these ratios to actually understand if it's actually worth providing that loan amount to an organization. Now let's look at another couple of useful financial ratios in brief. We look at market prospect ratios next. Market prospect ratios are specific ratios applicable only for publicly trading or essentially listed companies. Now these ratios compare current stock prices with other financial measures like earnings and dividend rates etc. These ratios help investors get a measure of future stock values, stock trends and projected dividend values. Now obviously these are very important metrics if you want to consider investing long time in a company. So yes these ratios only apply to publicly trading companies and within this financial ratio type the encounter concepts such as earnings per share dividend payout ratio and dividend yield. Now let's look at one of them which is dividend payout ratio. Now like the name suggests this ratio measures the portion of a company's net income that it decides to give to its stakeholders or shareholders rather. The formula for this ratio is dividend payout ratio equals total dividends divided by net income. So rather than an example which is quite straightforward, it's important to speak about the significance of this ratio. This ratio is normally of high interest to, to shareholders as they would want to know the proportion of net income that a company decides to share with its shareholders. And not just that, shareholders would also want to see a trend of dividends against net income over time. Knowing a percentage would actually help invest investors understand at what point in a company's growth cycle are they actually investing, are they actually entering if they're deciding to invest in that company. Now, before we wrap this tutorial up, there is an interesting financial ratio concept which we're also going to look at, which can be used as a ratio, and that is contribution margin. Now, this is a ratio that can be used by a company's management to improve internal processes. So, it is sort of like an internal ratio. When it comes to costs, companies tend to have fixed and variable costs. Now fixed costs are production costs that tend to stay the same even with an increase in volume of production. For instance, the commercial rent of the factory. Now this is not going to change with an increase in production. Variable costs are costs that increase with an increase in production. For instance, the raw material costs. Now if you need more production you need more raw materials. So those are variable costs. Contribution margin is the difference between a company's total net sales revenue and its variable costs. It can therefore be used to determine how to efficiently increase production without a tremendous increase in variable costs. So management can actually use it to try and increase production in a way that the prices or or the costs rather don't increase too much. So it's a very important internal financial ratio concept. Okay so these are some of the financial ratio analysis concepts and ratios that by popular demand we are looking at. I really hope that this tutorial was beneficial for you and if there are any particular ratios that you want covered or you basically are unclear about please do use the comment section and I will try and reply to them all. I always reply, try my best to reply to every single comment that I encounter on my tutorials. Okay so I thank you very much as always and I highly encourage you to Support this channel by buying me a coffee or by sharing this tutorial, by liking and by subscribing. And also please keep taking care of yourself. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.